We are producing this video as educational partners to demonstrate the importance of pain mitigation when castrating calves. Castration, the removal of the testicles of a bull, is performed on young calves to diminish the behavior associated with intact males. Steers are less aggressive in the feedlot and less likely to injure one another. Castrated bulls can be grouped with heifers without the danger of unwanted pregnancies. Processors prefer steers over bulls. Because at slaughter age, steers have higher meat quality. The preference for steers is reflected in the higher price paid for steers over bulls at market. Pain is inherently a part of castration. Minimizing castration-induced pain is important for animal welfare, growth performance, and immune suppression. The pain of castration occurs first as acute, short-term pain associated with the actual castration procedure. Studies have shown that calves experience acute stress immediately after castration, and this stress usually lasts from three to eight hours. Acute stress is measured by the cortisol levels in the calf's blood. Research in New Zealand has shown that a combination of local anesthetic and a systemic anti-inflammatory agent eliminates the cortisol increase during the first eight hours after castration. Chronic pain is the longer lasting pain which occurs in the days following castration until the injury is healed. Chronic stress is measured by assessing weight gain after castration. Similar weight gains have also been shown for the first seven days after castration when local anesthetic and anti-inflammatory agents were used. In this video, calves have been given oral meloxicam and a subcutaneous injection of lidocaine, a local anesthetic to aid in pain management. Meloxicam and lidocaine are prescription anesthetics and you must contact your veterinarian through the context of the VCPR, Veterinarian Client Patient Relationship, to ensure proper placement and dosage. Castration of calves can be done at any age. However, a younger calf seems to experience less discomfort and thus less weight loss. Researchers from Nebraska have shown that as the age of castration increases, weight loss resulting from the procedure increases. Also, younger calves are easier to handle and restrain than older, larger ones. The bleeding, infection, and weight gain depression associated with castration are also less in younger calves. In general, calves should be castrated before three months of age. Avoid castrating during the hot summer months due to fly problems and resulting infections. Castrating in wet, dirty environments is also not advisable, as the calf could lie down and develop infection from exposure to mud and manure. Proper restraint is necessary when castrating calves and having a second handler is preferred. Anytime the calf is castrated standing up, tail restraint is recommended. Lifting the calf's tail and pushing it forward over the back will quiet the calf and decrease kicking and potential injury to the person doing the procedure. Do not twist or bend the tail. Rough handling of the tail does not quiet the calf. Your helper can also push the calf against a solid wall, placing their knee in the calf's groin to immobilize them. Using a squeeze chute is preferred or placing a bar behind the calf when castrating in a chute without a squeeze helps reduce the possibility of being kicked. In this video, this calf has been sedated using xylazine. To begin, first examine the scrotum and feel for the presence of two testicles. If only one testicle is found, the other is probably located within the abdomen of the calf. If it is palpable, attempt to massage it down to the scrotum so it may be removed. Contact your veterinarian if you cannot manipulate both testicles. Do not ever only remove one testicle. The abdominal testicle will provide testosterone to cause unwanted aggressive behavior in the feedlot and possibly unwanted pregnancies. It is also important to identify if the calf has an inguinal hernia prior to castration. Affected calves have a larger than normal opening into the abdomen, which allows intestines to fall into the scrotum. One side of the scrotum is usually affected and this side will appear unusually large and mounded closest to the abdominal wall. If you suspect a problem, stop and contact your veterinarian for help. Castration methods can broadly be classified as either surgical or bloodless. Surgical methods include practices such as the emasculator method and the Henderson castration tool. Bloodless methods include banding techniques, burdizo emasculatomes, and chemical castration. In this video, we will demonstrate a surgical method of castration as it is preferred by the industry, leaving behind a scrotal remnant. 
Surgically castrated calves have lower incidence of infection and are certainly completely castrated when both testicles are removed. Calves castrated by other methods are often incompletely castrated. Tools used in this video include lidocaine to be injected into the spermatic cord to provide local anesthesia, a surgical towel clamp to hold onto the scrotum, a scalpel blade to incise the scrotum, iodine-based disinfectant to treat the wound after the removal of the scrotum and testicles, and fly spray to be applied to the area to prevent flies from infecting the wound. The first step in surgical castration is to inject the spermatic cord with lidocaine. Wait several minutes to proceed to the next step of opening the scrotum. The initial incision is made by pulling the bottom of the scrotum down with a surgical clamp. Never use your hand. With the other hand, cut off the lower half to a third of the scrotum without cutting the testicles. A larger opening is always better than a smaller one. Smaller openings do not allow adequate drainage and could result in higher incidence of infection following castration. When making the incision to the scrotum, be careful not to cut your hand, the testicles, or the large vein inside the calf's leg. A Newberry knife can also be used to make this incision. Grasp a testicle and pull it down through the now opened scrotum. Gently pull on the testicle until you feel the muscles in the spermatic cord separate. You will feel two distinct snaps as they separate. Stretching and severing the muscle first reduces the amount of bleeding that occurs and the calf is now unable to pull the testicles back up. There are four methods of removing the testicles from the calf. The first is to use an emasculator. Emasculators are specialized instruments designed to crush and cut the spermatic cord as the testicles are removed. The key to using an emasculator is to place the nut of the instrument against the testicle, nut to nut. Otherwise, you will not have the cord to crush once you close the instrument. Emasculators are usually used on older bulls with a larger spermatic cord. In young calves, the testicles may be grasped and pulled until the cord breaks, as shown in this video. A dull knife can also be used to sever the spermatic cord. To sever the spermatic cord with a dull knife, scrape the cord gradually separating the tissue and vessels until the spermatic cord breaks. It is important not to cut the cord as this will result in excessive bleeding. The fourth method is the Henderson castration tool. The Henderson castration tool is designed to be more effective on older bulls. The tool fits on a variable speed drill and is clamped to the spermatic cord near the testes. The drill is then slowly rotated until the testicle is removed by approximately 20 rotations of the drill. To minimize infection, cleanliness is important before, throughout, and after the procedure. Instruments should be clean and maintained in a bucket with water and disinfectant. Gloved hands should be washed in the disinfectant before beginning and between calves. Avoid touching the chute or the calf's body with your gloved hands. If the scrotum is dirty, it should be washed with disinfectant and dried prior to the procedure. The water and disinfectant should be replaced after 15 calves because the water will become dirty and the disinfectant will become ineffective. 
The final step in surgical castration is wound treatment. Flies cause annoyance and are associated with an increase in wound infection. Liberally apply fly spray, spray repellent over the back end of the calf and inside its back legs. Do not spray directly into the open scrotum. Calves should not be turned out into a wet area. Instead, a clean, dry area where they can calm down and walk around. An excited calf will bleed more. Offering fresh feed immediately following the procedure helps encourage the calf to remain standing to avoid contaminating the fresh wound. The processes that are commonly used for bloodless castration where the scrotum is not opened are elastrator bands, calicrate bander, easy e bloodless castrator, California bander, and Berdizo emasculatome. These methods are not demonstrated in this video. It should be noted that there is a risk of anaerobic infection such as tetanus when using banding methods. Calves should be vaccinated with tetanus toxoid 7 to 10 days before banding and receive boosters at castration to mitigate the risk of tetanus. Banding is also associated with a high incidence of missed testicles. For these two reasons, elastrator bands are the least desirable method of castration. Many studies have demonstrated undesirable levels of discomfort and poor weight gains experienced by large bulls whose testicles have been banded. Also remember, older, heavier bulls are more difficult to handle. Thank you to the calves of North Central Technical College of Wausau, Wisconsin and their veterinarian, Dr. Luke Peterson, for helping to make this video possible.